today's episode of the Relatable Garage Tour series, we have a very special episode. And uh, as you can hear, you have a very special host today, as uh, this is Jamie the Cleaner, and I'm going to try and channel my inner Anthony Fisher in today's very special garage tour. We're here in Monterey, California, and we're going to get a very special tour of the one and only Gordon McCall's Dream Garage. Now, this is going to be a little more relatable than you think, as he has many stories to tell, and his whole garage tells a very interesting story. So let's check it out, see if uh, Gordon lets us in. Just like that, for Gordon McCall. Jamie. Thank you for opening your uh, garage doors and letting us and uh, the people of YouTube get a little tour. Absolutely, welcome. Welcome to my hideaway. Yes, indeed. So it's all about location, location, location. So Gordon, where are we exactly? So this is the Monterey Motorsport Park. We built this about three and a half years ago. It's in Monterey, California. We're about a half a mile away from the Monterey Airport and about 10 minutes away from the world famous Laguna Seca Raceway. Right in the middle of everything especially during monterey car week right yeah Those exciting times for sure yep so gordon we got to get it out the way we kind of have an elephant in the room with this beautiful <laughs> ford cobra so what's the story and why is this the particular car you have in your uh, garage well it's actually the snake in the room jamie the snake in the room yes <laughs> so this car actually belongs to a very dear friend of mine marty Ballou. he's a big cobra guy um, we spend a lot of time together. It's a really fun car to drive. Uh, we're doing a big unveiling tomorrow. So I had to kick my car out of here and put a Cobra in here because we're gonna have this whole thing be about Fords. And so that's why this car is here. Plus, I don't mind looking at it. I right. really don't. Yeah, fun to drive, uh, fun to look at too. Yes, indeed. So yep. we usually tackle a couple of kind of what makes the garage, kind of uh, the build, the lighting, the flooring this and that, but we're gonna get some good stories along the way. So like I said, you have a storied career of uh, detailing for many, many years, and you have a lot of memorabilia. This is kind of a collection <laughs> of your career. It's it's my life, actually, Jamie. It's, right. You know, I didn't go to a garage sale and buy all this stuff. There's exactly. A, there's a story behind everything here. I've learned over the years that this whole car and motorcycle thing is something that you don't enjoy in a vacuum. You don't just, go into your private little space and geek out on your stuff. You share it, you share it with friends, you tell stories, you hear stories. And that's what this motorsport park is all about. And that's what happens in my garage here. It's all about, you know, I come to work here every day. They all have mezzanines, so everybody's got an office space in here as well. And uh, you just kind of never know who you're gonna run into here, which is kind of fun. But uh, I decided to fill my walls with uh, a little bit of my career. I've got a car barn at home as well, so this is kind of a condensed version, but uh, I'm inspired by things that have happened in the past. It, uh, it definitely influences me. I'm in the event world as well, so it kind of inspires me towards coming up with new ideas of different things to do, and um, that's, that's what all this is. This is a little bit of my past. Right, so that's fantastic. So the lighting solution, is this kind of the solution for all the other ones as well? Is this one particular? Yeah, so it's what kind of, kind of museum-y. Well, you know, for, it is, and what happens with these spaces, Jamie, is um, you, know, you can do whatever you want on the inside of your space. Mm. So it's, it's, it's your choice. Um, I'm not a huge fan of fluorescent lighting, although this, this LED stuff is a little more uh, favorable to paint. Mm -hmm. um, I know fluorescent lighting is just vicious on, on paint, but I brought in the incandescent uh, just to kind of highlight, you know, my helmets, some of the art, just to kind of break it up a little bit. It's more of a vibe than it is function. Um, the flooring, I just went with epoxy gray. I just wanted it to kind of go away. Um, right. I, I initially started with polished concrete, but you know, polished concrete has a downside as well because it's still porous and just about everything I own leaks something. And yeah, I, yeah. I just didn't want to deal with that. And uh, you know, this this polyurethane flooring is pretty, pretty bulletproof stuff, you know? So it's worked out, it's worked out. Yes, sir, it definitely, yep. you know, you don't want to, catch too much attention with the floor you know you want everybody looking around floor. that's yeah. right that's yeah. right that's it's right. not about the floor and I see a lot of places and I respect and admire what everybody does with their space right it's mm -hmm. your space do what you want with it but I look at some of the flooring and it's like whoa that's it's all about the floor you don't even see the <laughs> yes. car I think that's a problem with a lot of our detail shops is you know we like to get the nice fancy flooring yep that kind of takes some attention away of some of the beautiful cars we work on. Speaking of uh, the next solution you have some beautiful cabinets over here so how about let's talk about some storage solution 
that you have. You see, they're kind of a, the thinner variety. What kind of? Yeah, you know, they, uh, these these new age cabinets. Um, they're they're really economical. They're high quality. They're powder coated. Um, <clears throat> I think it's a company out of Canada, if I'm not mistaken. I've got a lot of friends that have used them. <clears throat> these are not the 24 inch deep ones because I did I didn't want to chew up too much of my square footage. And I'm a bit of a pack rat, as you've noticed, so I don't mind having stuff out because it's stuff that I use or it's stuff that I like to look at. So, you know, I use the cabinets to store chemicals and, you know, uh, motorcycle leathers for my bikes. Uh, uh, it, I could have gone a little wilder with more cabinet space. You never have enough cabinet space, just like you never have enough flat surfaces. Right. And you will fill them, <laughs> regardless right. of how much you have, you know. See the, the Dream Maker poster, is this, what, what's in these cabinets? Is this where you had the lifetime supply of uh, McCall's Dream Maker? <laughs> well, I don't know if it's lifetime, but um, yeah, actually, uh, I do have a, a fair amount of PNS products. I'm a long time, since the 1970s, I'm a long time PNS customer. Um, we collaborated, Bob Phillips and I, and uh, his brother Dave, we collaborated on the Dream Maker product, which is a lot of fun to get my name back on a bottle again. You know, we did a product, this was, this was 20 years ago that we did this. Um, so it's not enough for me just to try to make things look better. It's really nice to get an understanding of the chemicals that help you along the way. So yes, sir, you have a whole, the original McCall's packaging yeah, here. Yeah. Give so us a little we, breakdown of that. We created these again 20 years ago. This was a rally kit that uh, I had uh, an event that I recently sold to Haggerty uh, at the Monterey Jet Center. We host 3,000 people. Um, every year and we were using this as a gift that we gave everybody we called it a rally kit back in the day it had a polish in it uh, tire treatment leather treatment and uh, a quick spray 20 years ago we were a little ahead of the curve so that was the original that's the collaboration original. yeah that's the original collaboration which is why it's so much fun to come full circle right. with PNS with dream maker so dream maker it's so looking at the fantastic posters and helmets is there any particular story that rings a bell well, with this wall? You know, before I started the Quail 20 years ago, I was involved with the Pebble Beach Concours. Uh, I ended up, uh, started there as a high school sophomore and as a volunteer and ended up helping develop the system that's used to this day in terms of how they bring the show cars over the show ramp. Um, in 1985, we got all six Bugatti Royales together. That's what that is. And uh, it had never been done before. They only made six of them and we managed to pull them all together. And that was a real high water mark for me, you know. Um, Again, it's the stories behind the cars that make them so interesting. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, said, I said goodbye to the Pebble Beach show after 28 years and started that quail show, like I said, 20 years ago. And um, that show's going quite well as well. Yes, sir. Yep. Going yep. into uh, more storage, I see you have quite the cabinet here with a lot of uh, car models. What's the story? Yeah, each, each one of those, Jamie, has a major story behind it. Uh, you know, these aren't, uh, these aren't die cast models. These, these are handmade 143rd scale models that I've had an obsession ever since I was a kid with my Corgi toys and Matchbox toys that, uh, that my mom used to give me for holidays and such. Um, there's a story behind every one of these. It's either a car I had something to do with back when I was running the Christie's auction house or, uh, you know, I know the owners currently or former. Um, I, I just, I'm inspired looking at them. You know, there's, there's such great history in these cars. A lot of them are gifts. Um, a lot of them came from a dear friend of mine, Ned Tannen, who was president of Paramount Pictures. Ned and I used to share our interest in these small scale cars and we used to trade them with each other. I mean, it's kind of like baseball cards with kids, but, right? but we're full on adults. And here's a guy, powerhouse in Hollywood, running one of the four major studios and his passion was 143rd scale models. Granted, he was a car collector as well, but I'd swear the models almost meant more to him than the cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Yeah, speaking of studios, I see the director's chair, the McCall's director's oh, yeah. chair. Do you like to sit in that and kind of <laughs> Yeah, I do. I, some people around. I joked a little earlier about trying to set a record of how many items could you put your name on, but uh, yeah, that's what that's that's what happens when you're in the event world. And uh, fortunately, uh, you know, being in that world has led to uh, you know back when I was detailing and restoring, led to a few a few awards over the years. Quite so a few, I see. That's what all these are all about. Um, it's uh, it's nice to get recognized for the uh, for the labor you put into making cars look better. All right? You do know? you have one that's particularly? You know, I really, I really don't. I'm, I'm proud of all of them. Proud of all uh, of them. Proud of all of them. Proud to have been a part of, uh, of that world, you know, um, and really impressed to see where it's come to today. And detailing has turned into a whole different industry than it was back when I was doing it. Yes, it's sir. really impressive. Yeah, beautiful. Let's go to this side of the shop. We have McCall's Motorworks Revival 2007. Is that the original? Yeah, no, no, that, that event was, I had 30 years of, of, of my wife and I, Molly, and I 
started that event in the late 90s and uh, we ran it for 30 years up until a couple years ago we sold it to Haggerty. Mm -hmm. um, so it's theirs now, they've changed the name, but uh, we were the innovators and I'm quite proud of this. We brought automotive and aviation interests together. Uh, turns out it hadn't been done before uh, in, in that kind of a setting. And I'd so say it's pretty unique. It's pretty unique and it's a great way to host a bunch of like-minded people to start Car Week and that was our whole intentions. And so it started off as something that was like literally 100, 100 friends. Right. It evolved into a pretty major production. 3,000 people, 25 airplanes, 100 cars. It was, it was quite, a, quite a deal. So, but yeah. we're happy to pass the torch and, uh, and, move, and move on from it. Yep, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So motorcycles. Yes. Speaking of uh, yeah, yeah. fun, I think Anthony Fisher would have a couple more questions about them than me, but that's the story <laughs> on a couple of these Yamaha. Yeah. So, you know, most successful road racers uh, from a few years ago started their careers on a TD250 Yamaha, which is what this is. It's a small displacement, uh, little Grand Prix bike, which usually led to something bigger like this Yamaha TZ750 from 1974. You know, there was a period of time, Jamie, if you weren't riding a Yamaha TZ750, you weren't gonna win the Daytona 200, which is thought of as one of the premier road racing events in the world. So for 11 years, it was dominated by these motorcycles. Um, they're, they're ruthlessly vicious, difficult motorcycles to ride, but when they work and when the rider has talent, they win. So that's what that's all about. We even have a little Heritage Award. Yeah, yeah, won the AMA Hall, Hall of Fame there. Heritage Award. And um, my little homage here to a very dear friend of mine who's actually a neighbor here at our motorsport park, a gentleman named Wayne Rainey, three-time world champion. Um, amazing guy, blazed the trail for a lot of other riders. And now he's president of Moto America, which is running the, uh, it's the premier road racing series in the US. Uh, he's looking to find the next American star, somebody that can follow his footsteps. And Wayne's and a great guy. between the MotorWorks Revival and the motorcycles, I see a particular New York World's Fair poster that has to mean something to you right there. What is the story you know, of that particular poster? Jamie, it, it, it looks a little out of context here, actually. It does, it's like, yeah. what, is a, what is the New York World's Fair? Well, um, 1965, my father brought me to the 1965 World's Fair, which was, as a kid, I was an eight-year-old kid, it was just an amazing, over-the-top experience for me. They launched the, the then-new Ford Mustang at that event. Um, I'd never seen anything like it, and as it turns out, that was the last thing I did with my father. He passed away shortly after that. So, so that's I, really uh, special. Yeah. So I'm reminded by him or of him daily now. Uh, you know, by having that, having that on my wall. Yeah. It's a great reminder. Yeah. Great reminder. That is a beautiful story. Yeah. Fun stuff. Let's make our way continue into deeper into the garage. Now, see, we got us a working cart here. It seems like. Yeah. But all kind of the nice PNS products. Yep. We got an old school. Is that a DeWalt down there? It's a DeWalt steam <laughs> powered cable? steam powered buffer. <laughs> <laughs> I said I was old school, right? <laughs> That's right. So how often are you getting in here and really throwing down on a vehicle anymore? You know, I, so I have I have a bunch of cars, a bunch of vintage cars, and I do all the work myself, uh, mechanically and and cosmetically. Mm -hmm. Before I was into detailing, uh, I'm a I'm a certified Ferrari technician from from back in the day. My first business was a Ferrari restoration mm -hmm. shop. And so uh, that's actually what this toolbox is all about. That's a 1976 Snap-on Bicentennial <laughs> toolbox. Uh, yeah, you know, I made, I, toolbox. I made my living uh, with Snap-on tools, uh, working on Ferraris back in the day, which then turned into the cosmetic side. So right. uh, I tear into my paint all the time. You know, I, uh, whether it's motorcycles or cars, uh, again, I love doing it. I'm blown away with the quality of the materials available today. Mm -hmm. um, I strictly use PNS, have forever, and, uh, and continue to do so. So we know PNS is the chemicals. You have a favorite polisher you like to grab? Um, I tell you, the Dewalt is hard to beat. It's hard you to know, beat. When you cut your teeth, uh, you know, I was around when the foam pad was developed, and that was a game changer when we went from wool to foam. Yeah. Uh, but I had a knack, and that's one of the ways I got closer. My friendship got closer with Bob Phillips. Bob used to call me when he had clients up in the Bay Area that were struggling, like car dealerships that were struggling with black paint. And I had a reputation for being able to produce swirl-free black paint, and I was doing it with a DeWalt. I, I had my own system that worked really well, and so, you know, it's not always the equipment that makes the difference. Right. It's it's the operator often, you know, and that works both good and bad. Yes, sir. Um, you know, I've always believed that Hippocratic Oath that they apply in the medical world. I think it applies in the detailing world even more so, which is first, do no more harm. Right. Don't burn the paint. 
don't, <laughs> don't do something that, you know, don't, don't dive in if you're not 100% confident in what it is you're doing. Um, so I can't knock the early DeWalt buffers. You know, before that one, it was a Black & Decker. The thing must have weighed 50 pounds. Um, but again, if you knew how to use it, you could really turn out some great finishes. Yeah, they've been yeah. around for a long time. They have. Steel. They the have, yeah. First course, tools many people course, grab. We weren't working with polyurethanes back then. You know, we were, we were mostly working with lacquer. And, uh, you know, I did a lot of wet sanding and a lot of finish work with no machines. Right. I did a lot of it by hand. The old trick of Meguiar's number no. 7 and Blue Magic Metal Polish. After sanding it down to 1000 grit, which back then was the finest paper you could buy, um, it's amazing what you could turn out though. You could get a finish, you know, like that. Usually when we get, go to walk around a corner, that's where you sometimes maybe not want to bring everybody back there, but do you want to show us maybe a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I know what you mean, Jamie. <laughs> it's usually where you give up. Yeah, this is usually so, where it gets good on a garage tour. We come around a corner, we got this little section here. What, anything, yeah, any, any hidden gems back here? Well, you know, so um, yeah, the restroom's a little gem when, when needed, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I decided to put a, a, a restroom in here, a little kitchen, um, so you know I can I can have get-togethers, uh, you know, heat up lunch, whatever. I see a uh, few track suits. Yeah, so actually the leathers right there are, are are pretty darn important. Those are Wayne Rainey's leathers. Oh wow! From uh, from his career, and then my driving suit for racing, uh, and I finally found a place to put some of my lanyards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd say you did. You know, all of us in the car world have lanyards, uh, you know, for uh, for all the different events that we're involved in. And I finally found a place. So this is a fraction of what I've got. I think I might use the railing on the other side. Um, you know, it's a little cluttered looking, but again, I'm inspired when I see this stuff. It reminds me of uh, fun events. Right. Yeah. Yep. I see another working cart. Yeah, you know, well. <laughs> again, I, not, yeah, I, I don't have a whole lot of space here. This is about 800 square feet, 850 square feet, yeah. 500 downstairs, about 300 upstairs. Um, I've got a lot jammed in here, but... Right. Uh, these, these, these are the types of carts we get a little excited about, you know. This is really what you kind of reach for yeah. when it's really time to throw down. So we yep. like a little sneak peek of that of what you're working with back here. Yeah. Any favorites on the cart you might want to highlight? Um, yeah, you know, not really. Just, <laughs> yeah, you never know what you're going to need when you're in trouble with something, right? right? Yeah. And that's when you usually end up concocting something on your own. You know, you mix a little of this with the middle of that and, yep. and uh, yeah, so... Good deal. Do you want to? Oh, look at this here. Yeah, we got uh, a little uh, a sign. McCall's official detailing team yes, shirt. Yes. So that was our last year of our MotorWorks revival event, and uh, the Detail Mafia, Bob and Rennie, put this together for me, which was really, really something else. Yeah. So I wanted to find a, a treasured spot on the wall for it. So every one of our spaces has a mezzanine. And a lot of people, when we built this place, said, look, I, I don't really want a mezzanine. I just want floor space. I'd like to be able to put stackers in so I can put more than you know a few cars in my space. But we ended up engineering this place so that it, they had to have this. This is an integral membrane of the construction. Mm -hmm. So what turns out is everybody is doing cartwheels over the fact that they have a mezzanine office space. Oh, I bet. Especially during the shutdown, you know, like the rest of the world, we got shut down during COVID and a lot of people ended up coming here and, and calling it their workspace. So that's what I did. And you know, when you're having a bad day, you just turn the computer off, go downstairs and polish something or adjust the valves on a race bike or whatever. Um, but I use this, it's kind of my library. It's, uh, it's where I come to work every day. So there's a funny backstory with that silver set. I get asked often, yes, I was about to ask, what the heck a, is a tea set doing in a- <laughs> Take time for like, a spot of tea? Yeah, so uh, I grew up with that. That was my mom's. It was, in, uh, it was in her living room and it was on my chore list as a kid when I was really, really young. I had to polish that thing. Oh. And it was so on yeah, a, so a monthly rotation. And so I credit that with my early interest in making things shine. Right. And so uh, I like to look at it every day. She's, she's sadly long gone, but uh, it also reminds me of her. So between that and the poster of the World's Fair, mm -hmm. I get reminded of my folks that uh, unfortunately I didn't get to spend a whole lot of time with, but uh, there it is. Yes, um, sir. I've got an interest in aviation as well, obviously, so I, I love having models of planes that I've had something to do with. Um, they're a lot of fun. Models of planes, so. you see quite the collection of uh, books and magazines. As yeah, you know, here. everybody likes to talk about how the internet is uh, the answer, but I, I, I agree, but I also love books. 
uh, I get I've I do a lot I spend a lot of time you know for years I ran the car department at Christie's the auction house and had to do a lot of research on various cars that we were selling and you know I'd, I'd use books you know along with the internet so lots of little mementos up here um, the image behind my desk is significant to me only because for one that was my birth year but also that was the first race at Laguna Seca uh, that was the first checkered flag that's a guy named Pete Lovely that won the race in a Ferrari and that uh, that has a special meaning now because as a kid I used to go out there, you know, every opportunity I got for the Trans Am races or the Can Am races. Uh, you know, now I race out there, which is a lot of fun, but I'm also part of a group that just took over the management of Laguna Seca Raceway as well. So it's near and dear to me. And again, just simple lighting. Um, I don't turn on the, uh, the LEDs, the overheads. I don't even turn them on up here. Um, there's a fair amount of natural light when you have the door up. So Right, you have that natural California sun coming in. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of artificial light because it's really tough to get it right. You know, it really is. Um, so, you know, you roll the doors up here and you get all the, all the sunlight you need. Well, good there you old, go. Good old California. Go, go down and uh, wrap this thing up. All right. All right, everybody. There you go. That was a quick, relatable garage tour of the one and only Gordon McCall. Gordon, is there anything on the way out that you want to tell the fine folks? Whatever's going on in your garage, keep doing it. Spend time in the garage. It's priceless. It really is. And uh, keep finding ways to make it better, you know, better, to, better suited for what it is that you're doing. You know, the garage often gets overlooked. You know, you see a lot of garages that have stud walls and a light bulb hanging from the center of it. It's like, do yourself a favor and find a way to outfit it, you know, get, uh, get it set up so you can, you can enjoy it and use it. And a lot of businesses being run out of garages these days too, you know, yes, it's a great place as a detailer, you know, so, uh, I just encourage you to keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, and that brings up, is there any short-term or long-term goals you have in mind for this particular space? Uh, I'd like to put an electric motor on the door that weighs <laughs> several hundred pounds. <laughs> it's the one unit we didn't put an electric motor that on. That may help mine. you out a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I want to get, I've got some big graphics. I don't like graphics hanging off of uh, railings, and so I need to get a scissors lift in here. I've got some big graphics from events that I do. I'm going to put up on the remaining wall space. Um, but other than that, I'm pretty well sorted here. I'm pretty happy with what, uh, with how it's turned out. So I love spending time here. Yes, sir. All right. Yep. Well, thank you again for the incredible garage tour, and uh, we hope to see it again in the future. Awesome. You will. Appreciate you. Thanks, Jamie.